From the morning reading, Diamonds, XLI, XLK, inch to new highs as Spider, IWM, the Qs, and XLY pause as momentum slows. Oil and energy move lower. Nine, five of nine sectors moved higher and one was unchanged on Wednesday. XLU, XLP, and XLB were the strongest sectors while XLE was the weakest sector. Oil futures fell at $1.51 to close at $45.11. Breath weakened compared to the prior day as decliners led 1595 to 1398 on the New York Stock Exchange and led 1518 to 1028 on the NASDAQ. On the S&P snapshot, a 0.01% gain for the third consecutive record close. The global rally in major equity markets around the globe lost some steam. Asian indices were the best of the lot, with the Nikkei up 0.84% and Shanghai up 0.36%. The European indices were mixed with the downward skew. The DAX closed down 0.33%, the FTSE down 0.15%, and the CAC was up a fractional 0.9%. The big three in the U.S. were also mixed. The Dow was up 0.13%, and the NASDAQ down 0.34%. The benchmark S&P 500 traded in a narrow range and closed with the Microsoft at 0.01% gain. But any finish in the green earned the distinction of the third consecutive record close of its four-day rally. The yield on the 10-year note fell five basis points to close at 1.48%. In other reading, transportation stocks are still lagging. This has been a theme for most of this year and beyond, but it's getting renewed attention because other indices like the Dow Industrials have broken out to new highs. There's always a concern that badly lagging transports is a sign of economic trouble that will drag down the other indices that have performed better. But looking at the few historical precedents, that was rarely the case. Usually it was the industrials that dragged the transports higher instead of the other way around. Performance after stocks hit new highs has been a popular topic. We've seen it discussed many times recently, but the concern is seasonality. Stocks often struggle in the summer months compared to other times of the year, so perhaps a new high in July isn't as positive. There is some evidence of that, though there has been wide variability among prior instances. Investors are coming back to index ETFs. The combined inflow of Spiders, Diamond, Qs, and IWM on Tuesday was more than $11 billion, the most since September 16th of last year, when traders seemingly realized that the bounce off the August low might be for real. Since 2005, there have been 80 days with an inflow of more than $10 billion. A week later, the spider was higher 37 times, averaging a negative 0.8%. So the sudden rush to one exposure among ETF traders has more often not led them to question their decision. Hello, this is Stephen Harris a head trader from Falcon Global, where we model best practices for investors, traders, and day traders for entry to exit every trading day. In this daily video, I provide my opinion and insights of current market trends, market timing, volatility, and hedge risk levels for the upcoming day for the key U.S. financial markets. It is 6.16 a.m. Mountain Time, and I'm recording this in preparation for the market day of July the 14th, 2016. Full disclaimers are at the end of the video, but be aware that this is for educational purposes only and only you are responsible for the investing or trading decisions that you make. So let's go ahead and dive into the morning report. And we did have a fairly active night. And um, all four of the broad market indices are up at the time of this cut. But um, hold on just a second here. There's, um, either my data didn't refresh as I expected, or we, um, didn't capture the new data in the save, but bottom line is the S&P futures are up about 17 at this point, or about 0.82 of a percent. Russell futures are up about 11 points, almost 1%. NASDAQ's up about 
of a percent and Dow is up about 0.8 of a percent and crude oil up about almost two percent euros up about almost half a percent bonds are down almost one percent and gold is down about 1.35 percent and overseas action that also didn't get updated for some reason I'll have to replace this on the uh, subscription materials that go out. Sorry, guys. Um, in terms of macroeconomic reports for today in the United States, you had the weekly unemployment claims, core PPI, net gas storage, and that looks to be about it. In terms of macroeconomic reports, this is the right date. Um, Short-term VIX down to 11 and change. Closing trend, you see a 0.93 skew just barely again up over the warning stage. Do note these IV percentiles are getting exceedingly low. Now have three in single digits, including the Dow at a one percentile. So uh, that means that less than 1% of the trading days in the last 52 weeks have had less implied uh, implied volatility. So uh, S&P's at a six, the Russell's at a 12, the NASDAQ's at an eight. No standard deviation moves were put in yesterday on a close to close basis. Indeed, um, we had a couple hammers as we'll get into the charts. So here's the, um, the S&P's futures chart. And you notice yesterday the hammer um, I like I call that more of a doji at this point. I think we did have a couple hammers. We'll look at the others in just a second. But notice that it didn't really matter if there was indecision yesterday. The action this morning coming out of England, the Bank of England, with um, their interest rates uh, announcement and so forth. Uh, bottom line is the stimulus uh, coming from uh, Europe and other places is having an impact on the market this morning and uh, we're well up from yesterday's close so we continue to build on this breakout and thus far don't seem to be setting up for anything of a pullback of any note now on the Dow the same thing here's where our hammer came in but um, obviously, uh, that not a reversal signal. A hammer requires confirmation, and this is not confirmation. This is invalidation and a continuation of the prior bullish move. In terms of the Russell, we had a little bit, of, I guess we call that a spinning top. But again, if that was any kind of... Um, hesitation that's certainly not the case at this point uh, market continuing to move up as we approach the um, opening of the cash market a little bit more than an hour from now and then finally the nasdaq nasdaq also had kind of a small body but um, again continuation so all four of the indices uh, with the overnight and morning activity are continuing the bullish move Let's go ahead and take a look at volatility. And we would expect the volatility is continuing to come down. Right now on the VIX futures, we're down below a 14. The regular VIX product, of course, will open up with the cash market here in a few minutes. Uh, right now it's showing just above a 13. So kind of keep that in mind opportunity to start putting on some volatility based hedges is certainly opening up uh, in terms of crude oil we've had some really interesting chart patterns in crude oil of late with this undercut of the prior ascending triangle now you have to question whether that's a valid pattern at all anymore um, seems to be more of a downward channel if anything at this point in fact I think we're going to go ahead and since that is clearly not holding, we're going to probably go ahead and um, do 
do something more like this. So the question at this point is, is this more of a wedge pattern that is forming? Uh, we'll wait and see as this continues to develop. But that's part of what you do as a chartist is as new information comes in, you reevaluate your prior assumptions and then um, make adjustments. And right now, um, this appears to either be a downward channel or perhaps a wedge. We'll see if this starts to tighten up and then starts to form something more approximate to a wedge. If it is a wedge, then actually we would expect that it would, much like the ascending triangle, would eventually move to the bullish side um, as a wedge is kind of a contrary pattern to the prior trend, but then eventually breaks um, to that, um, in this case, to the upper side, uh, given the direction of the wedge. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at the bonds. Bonds have been terribly interesting of late, and as you would expect, if equities are moving up, bonds are moving down, so that seems to be confirming. And then also gold also down. So um, the inverse correlations that you kind of expect when people are pulling money out of gold and bonds, safe haven status, and running for the um, more uh, obvious um, returns uh, that are available from the equities starts to set up. We'll take a look at utilities. Utilities is... Um, shown some weakness of late, but certainly not exactly being crushed. In fact, yesterday, as we look at the sectors, you know, uh, some of our stubs, the consumer staples, the utilities, the bonds, you know, they were actually doing pretty well yesterday. Okay, I think that's probably enough on the charts. Let's go ahead and go to the daily report. And not a lot of changes here at the top compared to yesterday. Market phase two still trend reversal, the break of diagonal, and now horizontal resistance in terms of our three market timing signals. All three of them are solidly in the bullish camp. IBD gives us confirmed uptrend. GMI index gives us a six out of six with the buy signal since 7-1. Stock charts decision point gives us almost universal green signals across all the indices at all the time frames. With these holdouts being in the long term, we need to see those change to get our stack. In terms of position sizing, both models are giving us 100%. In terms of intermediate term market posture, severely strong in all four. And in fact, we see three of the four now are up over 90. So uh, very, very strong signals there. This is all supported by a bullish sentiment line as well. Uh, the strength of the trend is strong in terms of special opinions. Continue to layer on new positions. Don't pile everything in all at once, but continue to layer on as you gain confidence in this move. And there's reason to gain confidence in this move as it continues to add to its breakout. In terms of special warnings, uh, really we've got two weak situations that are currently in play a volatility ratio warning has uh, reset it had fired and then went back into the um uh the oversold as it were uh range and then um you know is waiting for a uh, a new firing signal so this was just basically um in a uh, kind of cautionary role but not yet calling for a spike in volatility and then skew remains just barely above the 125 threshold at which we go to warning status there are no warnings in the trend base in fact the bulls you know put in a very solid signal here with 574 and the new york stock exchange new highs new lows yesterday and the key inner market risk aversion indicators all five are risk on so nothing really there of warning even in sentiment uh, with some of that weakness that we'd had, you know, kind of scrubbed off some of that excessive sentiment. So stocks, short term and medium term, only a six. You see the fear and greed index is starting to get a little high on that one. And indeed, that is in that upper quartile. So that is somewhat extreme. But that doesn't mean that we're looking for reversal. That means we now look for reversal patterns, none of which have formed yet. Now, specific ETFs, you've got a number here, LQD, XME, Silver, the REITs, Total Bonds, 
the um, high yield bonds, orange juice, and now retail all showing signs of high sentiment and are setting themselves up for you know potential reversal patterns. So if you're in any of those markets with any of your investments or trades, continue to watch those charts. And in terms of sector specific, it's a sea of green now. All sectors, all time frames, all are up in their posture. In terms of percent change yesterday, you'll recall that the last session we talked about how it was all about high beta and the utilities, the telecom, the consumer staples, you know, the stubs as we're calling these, they were all down here. And here, one day later, they're flip flopped and it was all about defensive and the high beta stuff, you know, gave up some of it. So uh, we're still, uh, as we move, we're still seeing a very kind of tepid, hesitant set of investors out there. The first sign of any weakness at all, and off they run back to the stubs uh, and with their dollars. So it's, um, you know, there, we're seeing more exposure to the high beta risk on areas and you're seeing that reflected in a number of indicators here but at the same time um, you know it's a pretty skittish group so just kind of keep that in mind um, so there's not a lot of confidence but there's growing confidence in this bullish rally the other piece to this I, I picked up on some of the morning reading is with these kinds of signals that are being given at this point, any pullback that you get needs to be assumed that it's just that, just a pullback in a bullish trend is frankly probably a buying opportunity, or at least, you know, if you're doing put selling, it's an opportunity to put on some puts, um, as opposed to a, you know, failure of the rally until proven otherwise. Now, if you get a significant breakdown on the charts to where, you know, for example, on the um, ES, you know, if we were to break below, say, 2100, then, then you would start to question whether the rally had been invalidated. But just because it even comes back down here to like 2125 or something like that, that would not be a strong enough pullback to actually invalidate um, the bullish breakout and that would just be looked at as a bull flag pattern and an opportunity actually to add on more long positions so there is a kind of balancing act where any kind of retracement like this one here is looked as a buying opportunity instead of a challenge um, until you go too far and then at that tipping point then you start to question and perhaps you tighten up your stops and these kinds of things and swing trades and the like um, so just kind of keep all this in balance right now all of your signs and signals are strong bull and there's just really no reason to um, be overly hesitant um, it's probably a good call though to add new positions a few at a time as your charts on the individual patterns set up. But don't, there's just not that many warnings here to justify um, being super, super fearful at this point. Okay? So as new information comes in, obviously we'll digest that and reevaluate just like we do with the charts. Um, we've built this system to look at the market. Um, from a host of different ways, volatility, trend, you know, these key relationships, sentiment, etc. A whole host of different things coming into play to give us a feel for what the current market condition is. And there's, there's not a lot of red on here anywhere. So kind of keep all that in mind. Um, and in fact, um, with this current hedge warning status, I'm going to go ahead and change this for the report that goes out to the subscribers here in a few minutes to level zero plus. I think it's safe to say that we have um, continued to build on this breakout and uh, this really isn't level one kind of posture at this point anymore. So level zero plus, that's normal with some cautionary um, risk assessments, uh, primarily uh, at this point, the thing I'm looking for 
is if I saw these four red arrows go to green, I would drop to level zero, full out normal. And that, of course, would give us the stack that we often you know, look for as a sign of a healthy bull market. Okay, that should be enough. We just barely went over 20 minutes. So I'd like to keep it there. Remember, uh, as always, that um, you can speed this thing up. One of the things about using YouTube as the platform here is you have this little gear button, and there's two things you should be doing with that gear button. You should, when you, um, you know, obviously you should subscribe so that you get noticed when these content is posted. But beyond that, also, once you get to the YouTube page, that little gear button, make sure that when you receive that notice, give it just a couple moments, fully process and be available at high definition. And if you make sure that's playing in HD, that'll give you a nice sharp picture. The second thing is, is that you can also use the little gear button to speed up the playback and listen to a 20 minute video in about 13 minutes or so using the 1.5x speed and I think you'll find that still quite understandable and then of course you get something that you want to really listen to intently you slow it back down um, but you can play back and forth with that speed and, and save yourself a little bit of time in the morning still gathering all the information that you know I have to offer so a couple things to kind of keep in mind in terms of disclaimers, hit the pause button if you need more time to review the disclaimers. And then, of course, at the bottom here, you see the hyperlink that takes you to the full set of disclosures. Meantime, uh, manage that risk. It's always about manage that risk, no matter whether you're in a bull stance or a bear stance. You manage that risk well, and everything will fall into place. And we'll see you back here for the next session with the Falcon Global Market Preview. Good trading.